Hello and a warm welcome to News Across Nigeria. I am Olumide Makoli. We begin with this piece of breaking news that former Secretary to the Government of the Federation and former presidential aspirant Chief Olu Falaye has been kidnapped from his farm in Ondo State. That's as much as we can tell you right now. Again, former Secretary to the Government of the Federation and former presidential aspirant Chief Olu Falaye has been kidnapped from his farm in Nondo State. Channel Television will give you details of what happened as soon as we have it. We begin the program in the northern part of the country. One person has been confirmed dead and about 2,000 houses submerged by flood water in some parts of Kaduna State in northwest Nigeria. The flood is the result of heavy rainfall that lasted for over 48 hours. Areas like Abubakar Kigo Road, New Extension, Banawa, Angwarimi, Goningora, Karatudu, Kachia, Romi are heavily flooded. Many roads have been blocked, makes it difficult to get help and supplies to the affected areas and over 30,000 displaced people. Now in August, about 30 houses were affected by a flood in Kaduna as a result of heavy rainfall as well. The National Emergency Management Agency had given earlier warning to residents living in flood-prone areas that there will uh, be a release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon, and the residents were reluctant to comply, citing lack of funds to secure new homes. Uh, my house is flooded, seriously flooded. As you can see, I'm moving out. I've already taken my family out. I have no option rather than leave because you can see how cloudy the weather is. We cannot tell. Maybe the volume of the water will increase before midnight. And it won't be funny staying inside with this condition like this. You can see, in fact, I, I even fell as I was about coming out of my place and, you know, I just had to move my car out. We're told that they're going to reduce of a dam and then we're not even aware of this one coming. We cannot even find a place. Nobody can go to the house. House is filled with water and everything that you don't even imagine is happening here. The Kaduna State Government should come to our air and then there are seizures. Even if you quit now, where is the money to go to another place? That's the problem. And then even Kaduna State Government said we should stay away from the water. But where are we going? Who will help us? Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary of the Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency, Ezekiel Baba Karik, says the agency has commenced rescue operations in the 10 local government areas that were affected by the flood disaster. In an exclusive interview with Channel Television, the SEMA boss disclosed that the flood affected over 3,000 families, farmland, and public places. He said the agency has also put in place measures to evacuate all the displaced persons to a safer place where they will be provided with food, shelter, mattresses, and other essential amenities until the floods dry up. He also confirmed that one death was recorded in Lere local government area of the state as a result of the flooding. According to him, the flood incident could have been averted if the residents living in the waterways and flood-prone areas had complied with the agency's directive to vacate such places. The state woke up and started uh, experiencing the rising of waters from the rivers uh, since Saturday. And we thought by now, being Monday, the, everything will subside, but it keep on increasing. As I'm talking to you precisely, authentically, Ten local governments in Kaduna State are affected with this flood. Yes, uh, at the moment we have uh, Kachia, Kauruloka, Kachia local government, Kauru local government, Kaduna North, Kaduna South, Igabi, Chukun, uh, Lere, Kubo, uh, Soba local government. A committee has been set up in order to have a lasting solution to these problems. We don't intend to be managing disaster, flooding, all this one. Because if you look at this, people, these people that are affected, we are the people affected in the past five years. As I'm talking to you now, a council meeting is going on with His Excellency, and we are going to act promptly, immediately after the meeting. 
staying there, this time on issues of security, the Commandant General of Vigilante Group of Nigeria, the VGN, Mohammed Jahun, has said for Nigeria to effectively address the challenges of insurgency, cattle rustling and other related crimes across the country, there's a need for the federal and state governments to establish community policing and engage the services of local vigilante groups in crime fighting. He made the suggestion during the passing out ceremony of 4,000 vigilante members who've been trained on security and intelligence gathering in Kaduna, the state capital. What we need is just the law. Let there be an enabling law for the vigilante group in the country. When we have the law, we have the power, and our stipends will be paid to our men. You see wonders. It's not the issue of uh, when we have insecurity. You see the kind of people we have here. Everybody is zealous. Everybody is ready to work. But the government is not forthcoming. And when we're talking about insecurity, we are in every nooks and crannies of this country. We are ready to work. Everybody is ready to work. You can see the zeal. We have graduates. We have uh, school start and whatever. So I don't know the, what is happening. And when you say we are recruiting 10,000 policemen, it's good. It's a good idea. But then we have the we have the resources in the vigilante group. Come and screen them, recruit some of them from here. It's, it's an encouragement. Not even the police, any other forces that want to recruit. Let the government tell you, okay, go to vigilante group, you get the required uh, number. We are ready to work, we are ready to serve, but the support is not forthcoming from the federal government. No, for the issue of arms, we don't uh, envisage anybody carrying arms as far as the vigilante group is concerned because of the insecurity in the country. And you cannot carry arms unless you are uh formalized by the federal government you are properly trained to do that by the federal government if not we don't uh, encourage anything arms but what we do is provision of information to the relevant security agencies in the, all the nooks and crannies of this uh, country we had the information we relate to the, the information but they take us as people that don't even know what we are doing Staying with security, in particular insurgency, when news across Nigeria returns about the number of people that have died as a result of the multiple bombings in Bornu State is on the increase. Please stay with us. <laughs> 